Hello everyone and welcome to So Many Games Real Time. My name is Joachim and I'm here with Evangelus. And this is the second video of our top 100. So mm -hmm. today we'll be going from 90 to 81. Mm -hmm. um, before we start, uh, let me just say that we own all the games. So we haven't put any games in there that we don't actually own um, for whatever reason. Uh, my reason is that because I don't own them, they're going to eventually drop out anyway. Uh, there's probably a reason. And like, for example, uh, you won't see in my list uh, Lost Ruins of Arnak. I've played it several times on BGA and everything, but I don't own it, so I don't put it in. So don't expect it. Uh, spoiler. Oops. Um, yeah, and we did say uh, we have the challenge, well, challenge going on, the bets going on that uh, we're going to have um, crossovers. So you said under 15, I said over 15, and at the moment we are at zero crossovers. <laughs> so I'm feeling very confident. Mm -hmm. um, you started last time with the 100. snake, right? Yes, So I, guess... I ended with the snake. Yes, so I guess I'll start. Yes. 19. And I think we'll immediately start with a game that might roll your eyes, which I think will be the only one though. Um, and that is, but well, you might not know it actually. It's called Retrograde. So basically Retrograde, retrograde is uh, Space Invaders, the dice game. So, um, it is. It was a Kickstarter, a small Kickstarter. It got funded, I think, almost barely. I'm not sure. Um, but basically, it's Space Invaders the dice game. What happens? You, everybody has their own Space Invaders arcade in front of him, like a, a, mm -hmm. her, her or them or it, whatever. Uh, so you have all the, uh, the, the the enemies, right? But every sheet is different. And the whole the whole thick. Deck. No repeats. Yeah, there's, as far as I could tell, no. I went like 30 deep and I still couldn't see any repeats. So for sure, everybody, when you play, there's gonna, they're going to have a different sheet. So there's like different colors of, uh, of aliens, right? And then you have a bunch of dice, which of course have all the faces of, the, of said aliens. And then there's going to be um, the amount of players plus one amount of cards that are uh, in front of you. And on those cards, there's always going to be two aliens and potentially... A coin or a special ability okay um, and what happens then is you say go and people start rolling their dice but the thing is the aliens on those cards you have to choose a card and then you can only attack the aliens on that card mm -hmm. and when you shoot them on your uh, on your sheet the aliens have to be next to each other and you kill them so, of course, you're going to sh choose a couple that is close to each other so you can uh, mm. uh, cross off as many as you can. And you need to have two uh, die faces to kill one and you have six dice. So, basically, you are already thinking, okay, I'm going to go for that card. But you can start rolling and if somebody else goes for that card as well, it's, it's, time, it's, it's, it's timed, right? So, they might take the card before you can because they already rolled what they need. Okay. Because the moment you take a card, you have to stop rolling. So you're rolling and you're hoping for that, or you're hoping for the special powers that might make it easier down the line to do it. So it's always very like tense to, to, to get it as quick as possible. And then there's uh, 10 rounds, and then the game ends. And if you have a coin, you can use coins to uh, kill wild stuff or whatever. Um, yeah. So it's pretty simple, not that uh, difficult to learn, but it's just fun. The whole idea of looking around and, okay, I need that card, and then mm. trying to do it as quick as possible. And of course, people are cursing, like, no, no. And like, oh, no. oh, I took the wrong card, and stuff like that. It's just fun. It's just pure fun. And I didn't expect it, again, to like it as much as I do. Uh, I can't really see myself getting bored of it either. Just the fact that, and I already like the fact that every sheet seems to be different. Or at least there's uh, so many different ones that yeah. you're never going to have the same sheet with other people. How long does it take? It's very short uh, okay. because it's only 10 rounds. So you're going to be doing a rolling 10 times and then just crossing out. And also um, those aliens, there's six different aliens because they have a value of one to six, which is just like dots, right? So if you have a, a die left that you haven't used, you can cross out like a trophy at the bottom. So that's more end game scoring. If you kill all the trophies, you get more extra points and so on. And um, yeah, so I really enjoyed it. Uh, like I said, I didn't think I'd enjoy it as much as I did, but uh, so far the plays have all been really cool. And I think I can easily take that to my students. They'll all love it. Mm. Or just like a filler at a meetup. Uh, yeah, and it's just nostalgia, you know. Space mm -hmm. Invaders, pew, pew, pew. 
So yeah, that is uh, that's of course new, and that was my ninety, okay. or is my ninety. My number ninety is I don't have seven wonders, but I do have seven wonders dual. Ah, uh, I used to have that. I, it is so good. It is so. I don't know, just that 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 drafting mechanism. It's just so clever. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, just it's just, it could take seven wonders and makes it more gamey, more tactical, more trying to get into each other's brain even faster faster but still at the same time it's so it's, it's like a real struggle like a real tug of war also agonizing that yes. you take that card and, and then it gets flipped but that's, that's, that's a point right yeah, and yeah. now with the expansions which allows you not to there's the option yeah. not necessarily to pull it's just so clever and so elegant and how, I just love it how often would you go the science route because it seems well, to be a little bit less common than no. Well, it, it depends. How, sometimes you have to pivot. Mm. So, yeah. so it depends. Like if you see the guy, the, oppos the opposition, he's yeah. he's going war or he's going points. Yeah. You might and you've managed to get a couple of signs because he, maybe he, he took the war and you took the signs. Mm. Then you start pivoting towards science. Yeah. Yeah. It, it science. I've won many times with science. It just oh, depends okay. on. It's they're all three valuable ways to win, and with the expansion, there's a the fourth one with the, with the. Um, Pantheon, right? Yes, with the with the um, the, the, part, the, the 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 Congress or something. Yeah, but um, the politics thing. It's just it's just it's very pretty. The cards are beautiful. It's just I just think it's so clever how they turned this game into a two player game. Have you painted the swords and shields? No, but I got the I got the middle ones. <laughs> ah, okay, all right. and the middle coins. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, I enjoyed it when I had it, but uh, mm. just a very quick history lesson of my personal life. Uh, with my wife, at one point when she was pregnant, she wanted to play games, so I bought a bunch of them, including like Raptor and everything. Mm -hmm. And then after a while, she was like, eh, I don't really feel like playing that <laughs> anymore. So then I got rid of all those two-player games again. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so that's why I used to own it, but I don't have it. I've only got two two-player, uh, sorry, three two-player games. I think I uh, still have a bunch coming. Yeah, definitely mm. still a bunch. Coming. I don't have any two play games. Because uh, yeah, but I'll, I'll talk about it when we get why, there. Why? Why? why okay. Like that. Yeah. All right, your number is um, again okay, theme, and it's one of my favorite genres, which is a hidden movement game, one versus many, and that's Letters from Whitechapel. Mm. Just the. The, the Victorian theme with a map of England, one person being Jack the Ripper, the other being the police, mm -hmm. moving across this map of Victorian London. And it's like a chess game because it's there's no player power. The expansion allows you to have some player power, but that takes away from the purity of the game. It's pure deduction. No. Right? And you're trying to, it's a cat and mouse game, and you're trying to outwit the other person and you're trying to put the net around him. If you're the police, you're trying to put the net around him as you yeah. as you move in. And if you jack the ripper, you're trying to outwit them and put them on the sword. Kill them with the net. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just, it's just a, such a pure um, deduction game, and it's just uh, battle worlds and the tension really builds, especially if you jack the ripper. And the balance was is really good, right? It's very good. Yeah. Like it depends. Like if you're if you're a better player, you'll win every time. Oh, okay. Yeah. If you're a good player, jack the ripper, you'll win. And if you are, if you win every time, you won't get invited to the meetup anymore. Yeah. <laughs> and that's the point, though. Because if, if you're really good, Jack the Ripper, then you've got a team of people against you. Yeah. And so they can try and beat you. It's, 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 as I said, it's just a thematically brilliant game. It's just, the, the, the theme just works. Well, I'm very curious about it because um, I, when we were doing the um, games that got us into the hobby, you mm -hmm. talked about it a little bit. And I then researched a bit, and someone on Reddit was mm -hmm. asking, you know, what should I go for? Dracula, uh, well, Letters of Watch I'll be talking about Dracula later. Yeah. <laughs> or mind management. And then mm. most people said that the easiest, purest one to get into, uh, that you can play with anyone, is Letters from White Chapel. Yes. See, okay, I'll talk about, we'll yeah. obviously talk about Dracula later. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Spoiler. I always just shut up about it. Yeah, yeah. I can just like, mm. <laughs> But the, the one is very thematic, very luck, bit of luck. Oh, and okay. it's just, it's more, you know, just yeah, just a theme. But this one, yeah, it's just, it's, it feels like a chess game. 
but I own my management, but I still haven't played it. So it's one of the games that potentially could be in the top 100 down the line. But yeah. Don't worry, there will be a video where we talk about uh, our... World of Shame. Y yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, later. Anything else to add? No, I just, I, I really do love this game. And I love, as I don't have many cooperative games, but the ones I do, cooperative games I do have is, is the one versus many. I just think it's a really, it's a really fun genre. Have you ever played Alone? No. I mean the game, not... Because <laughs> I see that a lot, uh, but uh, I don't know mm -hmm. if it's... Okay, just on the side. All right, uh, mm -hmm. my 89 then, right? Mm -hmm. uh, my 89 is a long shot, the dice game. Um, the reason for that is I've talked about it in the top 2022 games as well mm -hmm. and people who watch that might say like huh that game was higher or lower than it is now yes it's possible because you know things happen in between time um, but I think in my top 100 this one is a bit higher than other games like for example King Hill because it's more accessible um, I can play with more people mm -hmm. and what I like about Long Shot the Dice game is that you start off with those eight horses. Nobody owns a horse, okay? Whoever starts rolls two dice. One die will tell you which horse is going to move, and um, the other die says how far it's going to move. So it's like three. So let's say it's horse number eight. But then the card of that horse has a special ability that you can use or not use depending uh, how difficult you want to make the game. First time, you're not going to use the abilities. Um, but underneath, you have all the numbers of all the other horses. And it might say number eight, which is, of course, is the horse that's crossed out. And it might also have number two crossed out. So that means the eight and the two are going to move. Mm. Now, then everybody can use the number eight from the horse on their sheet their, their personal board and do something with it they could buy the shirt of number eight they could buy the helmet of number eight which has certain uh, uh things that happen then um you can buy you can bet money on the on the horse because everybody starts with 12 dollars i think you can buy the horse if you're in, in turn order you can say okay you know what number eight is the cheapest horse because the most difficult to win you can buy it. And then if you buy it, then suddenly you have the power of the horse that you can use for the rest of the game. And of course, you're going to try to want to push it as much as possible. There's so many things that you can do. The solo is really great as well. So it is just a really fun game. And, and, and it's with, you can play up to, I guess, eight people because there's eight horses. I'm not sure. But it's just fun to play with people because you're like, oh, well, no, you should move his horse back. No, mine. And I'm like, oh, no. Okay, don't roll too. Hmm. Because, for example, if you roll your horse at the finish line, then your horse can only finish if you roll that number. If you, for example, if it's horse number two and you and horse number one is rolled and on the card it says two moves as well, it cannot move over the finish. So it has to be that horse that moves. So, um, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, so that's all pretty cool. It's just, it's just fun. And um, How long does it play? Oh, I think maybe half an hour or something. Okay. Uh, maybe a bit less. Depending on how often people get to move horses back and then you know, how fast and the rolling, how, how fast the horses go. Uh, and at the end of the game, of course, you're going to be checking uh, how much money, uh, how much money you bet on the horses because you can have two horses in front of you and they cannot finish and you can still win the game because maybe you bet a ton of money on the horse that mm -hmm. did finish. So it's like you're betting on different horses, you know yeah. what I mean? So it's, 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 it's pretty cool. It's, uh, it's fun. Okay. It's fun and it's quick. And I think it's somewhere here. But anyway, so yeah, uh, that is my number 89. Number 88. Is another Evangelos special because you introduced me to it. Uh, before, my previous list it was 67 and now it's 88, so it dropped 21 places. And it's all about, I guess you could say the Oregon Trail. Oh, I know which one it is. It's Pioneer oh, Days. Yes. Didn't make yes. my list. Uh, from Tasty Minstrel Games. So Pioneer Days, basically... It's such a cool game. And it, yeah, it's, it's such cool. It's so cool and it's so yeah. pretty. Yeah. Um, I love the dice. I love all the components. Um, basically, you roll a bunch of dice of different colors and then you, you draft them, right? And That's then right. you can choose what you do. You can hire people to, to help you. They might give you instant bonuses or end game stuff. 
um, so long. you can yeah. buy you can get all the resources that you you need um, for and example the you have like, yeah you have like medicine you have yes. wood you have a bunch of food I guess as well a bunch of stuff that you need mm. because every round there's one die that's not used and that color is one of the four disasters that moves yeah. forward and then if it ever reaches the end that disaster happens yes, yeah. with different effects and I remember one game very vividly where I was playing with three other people and um, I thought, okay, they are really not onto this, that this disaster is going to happen <laughs> if they don't pick that die. And I had repeated it multiple times during the game, remember this happened. So it's not like I was, you know, mm. messing with them. And at the end, it was like, oh, I'm going to take this die, so that happens. And then you just saw the realization across the faces. Yeah. No, because you can make your, you can even buy extra wagons and make your, your wagon longer so you get more points. And then they all lost a wagon and then I won. <laughs> it's like so cool. It's, but yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's just, yeah. I need uh, to get that back to the table. It's a really fun game. Yeah, it is fun. It is beautiful. Yeah. Um, and it, every, time it's, every time I do these lists, I'm surprised it's as high as it is, mm. that it beats out other games. But it's just, it's just, it has, Ticks all over the. Yeah. It's just like yeah, okay, it looks nice. Okay, it plays cool. It's like uh, it's not overcomplicated. Game swing. It's yeah, it's just very straightforward. And there's game swings as well. And you might yeah. sometimes feel like okay, I can hire someone, but there's so many good ones. Okay, this one if I get wood gives me an extra piece. So then if a, if a disaster happens, you have to be like okay, yeah. pay this amount of wood or lose a wagon for example. It has the right amount of tightness. Yeah, things are tight. Yes. Yeah. Which is what you want? I forgot what the four disasters were, but well, no, one is a storm. One is, famine. I think, famine. Yeah. Or something like that's, disease, disease, or something like disease. Yeah. And then with disease, you lose people, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. So, but yeah, I mean, you've yeah. seen the pictures now because they're on the screen. But cool. yeah, yeah, really like really. Yeah, I remember they really have really cool pair powers and. Yeah, because uh, mm. and always be really jealous of what other people could yeah. hire and uh, hoping that certain numbers came out and then maybe they didn't. But yeah, that was my number 88, Pioneer okay. Days. This one might be on your list. This might be our first crossover, but it's quite low. Again, I think because I had a bad situation, I had a bad game of it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't win. <laughs> no, it was more like, okay, it's, it's a Euro game that has five units. Ooh. Dwellings from El of El oh, oh, okay. No, I thought some. I uh, would have been really surprised if you said the other thing no, I was thinking no. about. Dwellings of El Yeah. Oh, so low. Yeah, because I really had bad experience recent, not so long ago, in which I got really hosed with the with the dice. Ah, the yeah. mechanic. You know, when you yeah. when you compete and then you you lose the dice and you lose everything and then you just get a small. Well, you don't necessarily have to fight, right? No, but sometimes people fight you, right? Ah, yeah, yeah, like that. Yeah. So. I mean, I, I was maybe just a little salty of that that one game. You know, <laughs> I go back to the table. <laughs> and I, I, Play I rolled, solo. <laughs> I rolled really badly, but it's really a good game. And now the expand the, the, the new games on Andromeda's, Kick, on Andromeda's Edge. Edge, which I'm really excited about too. Yeah. So it's just a beautiful game, and it's just the upgrading and the. the there's so much variety. Rawr. Yeah, I do have to do it. Did you see it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's I feel it. very stupid because I didn't back the Kickstarter. I got it afterwards. So you and then, it. And, and then I... Because when the Kickstarter was happening, I was like, oh, look, it has sound basses. So how childish, how stupid. I was yes. really bashing it. And then I saw on Instagram people playing it. And I'm like, oh, this is actually really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, no, it's, it's, it's over the top, but it's, it's, it's a really beautiful game. And I said the asymmetric powers, this is so cool because they've got like all different factions and then you can flip it over and get separate, like there's two per color, right? Yeah. And Did just, you get the Etsy covers to protect your covers? No, I didn't get it. You uh, should get that. You should is get that, it. Is that, is that one of the great team? Like, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. I should uh, get it. One thing I don't like about the game is how expensive it is. Well, for people now in general, mm -hmm. but also how expensive it is to get, for example, the playmat. It's 75 US dollars plus mm -hmm. another $60, $70 shipping. Sense. Yeah, it's $150 for a mat. That's insane. So I really want all of it, but I'm not going to trade But anyway, that has nothing to do with the game, of course, but that would be even better. Yeah, no, I'm yeah. thinking back now. Yeah. Um, but I really do like the game, but I think when I was, I was, I was burned pretty badly. But <laughs> it, is, it does bother me that, 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 that they have that kind of randomness in a Euro game. It, it, you, you, you can be quite, and you can be hit quite hard. 
Because yeah. the competition isn't as good. You, you need like, like one, a one, like, sword. one sword or something, right? Yeah. So it doesn't feel... But good. then it also depends which faction you're playing because in some cases uh, it actually can benefit you a little bit or you don't really want to win per se. But yeah, I can imagine that it's if you lose every... Because I've had games like that as well. Mm. Where, where where my friends would actively say, "Oh yeah, just fight, just just let Joe roll for the monster and we we'll win." Yeah, that happens. <laughs> just, so I was like, "Oh," <laughs> but it's okay because I mean the game has different aspects as well. And okay, mm. you you want to win, I understand that, but um, I was just salty. Yeah, it's just it comes with the territory, I guess. Because I remember my friend, mm -hmm. one worker, fighting against a monster. She won yeah, see because that. she rolled a four, and the monster was like one, one, two, 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 one, and one, three. That's it. And she won. I was you like, what? <laughs> so, I understand. There's a lot to say. Yeah, that you want yeah. simplistic battle battle yeah. rules, right? Just roll a dice and sort it out. Yeah. But maybe it also becomes too much like then. If that, you, know, you want more complicated battle systems, if it's especially in the Euro. I don't mm -hmm. know. But yeah, I, guess, I really do love the game. Yeah. So. Maybe that's for dwellings and Elder Veil vale too. Yeah. <laughs> Have you played solo? No. Because I haven't played against the ghosts either. But apparently they're to. they're quite a formidable opponent. Okay. That most people need one or two tries to de to defeat them. Okay. Because uh, it plays quite differently. Yeah. Just, yeah. I don't okay. know any other details, but yeah. Number 87. Okay, so my 87 then yes. is a heavy euro and this barrage. Ah, the water thing. The water, the water dams. The, the very, don't make a mistake or you're dead. Oh, it's just a mistake. It's more like, don't trust anybody. Oh, Cause, don't let them. Because uh, I heard like, it, this is one of those games, if you, if you don't, if you make some mistakes early on, then... Well, yes, screwed. because it, well, it's more like, you commit to a certain... Okay, so what happens is you, you decide where you build on, and then someone can come and deviate with the stream of the flow of the water uh -huh. away from your ah. your dam. Ah. So if you commit to a certain area and you leave yourself vulnerable for someone to come around and mess with you yeah. and steal your water, mm -hmm. you've overcommitted to an area that's not going to get any, get any uh, water. It's like one of those games where you make good friends with people. <laughs> so, but what's really interesting about the game is the wheel mechanic in which you... Basically, commit workers to a wheel to get a certain a certain uh, resource, mm -hmm. but then you have to wait for the wheel to click along to a certain point in which you order to get the workers yeah. back. So it's like a timeout for workers. Yeah, yeah it comes, really clever. It's coming back to me because in the there was a Kickstarter, right? Yes. And then there were problems with the wheel. Yes, and now they, they redid the wheel with wood. No, I haven't played it. I haven't played it. Uh... Over here, someone's over there. No, it's it's a. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, it's a. It's just a really clever game. It's just. It's kind of mean mm -hmm. for a Euro, but it's just, it's again, it's tactical work and trying to work around each other. And it sounds very AP inducing. It can be, but most yeah. Euros are like that anyway. That's true. We European people. Yes. And again, like I think, think. Actually, a lot of my games are very thematic. <laughs> and this is a theme of this you're building your dam, you're making, you're getting the thing, and then some, you could obviously you get competitors competing for the yeah. same res limited resource. Yeah. And again, that, that wheel's great. Oh, it's, it's a really good game. Yeah, I haven't played it. All right, so my 87, right? Yep. I think you might be surprised at how low this is. Okay. Uh, it used to be 54, now it's 87. Yes. Uh, it's uh, of my favorite company, of my favorite publisher, mm -hmm. uh, Roxley Games. And uh, it's uh, Dice Throne. So season one and season two. I don't have Marvel because I'm still salty about the fact that they didn't ship to Hong Kong during the Kickstarter. Maybe one day I will. Mm. Um, but the reason why it's so low is because I do like it uh, a lot. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it is just Yahtzee with powers. Okay. And um, I enjoy it, but I want it to be a little bit more. Maybe, yeah. And there is something that came out that made it more and that is also on the list okay. not, it's a bit higher so 
I like all the different characters. I like all the different classes. It's a bit like role player, you know. I like role player, and I like when role player came out with the monsters expansion, and then you get, you yes. got to do something, and that's what I feel here. Like you do head to head and you fight. Okay, that's fine, but I want yeah. That's no, more. Yeah. So, but I really like the system in, in itself. The 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 fact that you can um, you roll your dice obviously, but you have your cards and you can upgrade all your powers. Um, so, and the, the two seasons is just really, really beautiful. Just the, the plug and play element, just pull it. So you pull out the yeah. body, the thing, and just the tray, the tray and, and open up and everything's in there. Yeah, and uh, every so, character yeah. also has a nice, clear um, description of how difficult they are. Like, you can start with something simple and then build up from Who's there. Who's your favorite character? Huh, I did, uh, I liked the, the, the vampire lord a lot. Um, and then. I also like the paladin because he can become immortal because he has like the, the shield thing. Uh, but actually, I haven't played all of them yet. Uh, I think I played like a little bit more than half. Uh, but once again, it's a two player game. I mean, you can play with more people, but then it's always like, mm, whatever. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is something that I can easily take to a meetup actually and have like a tournament. Yeah, we'll take it one yeah because you don't really need a mat or whatever. That's true. You just need to have, you know, with the two seasons, you can have a tournament with eight people. Just mm -hmm. have like a, and then swap, 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 whatever. Mm -hmm. We should do that. Anyway, uh, <laughs> so I do like it, <laughs> but it keeps going down because it's a bit, I mean, I know what it is and I'm just not as excited about it as anymore, uh, anymore as I used to be. Even though I did uh, get the latest Kickstarter, the Krampus mm -hmm. versus Santa. Santa and I yeah. think Krampus is so freaky. I still don't get the whole holiday, but anyway, no offense to the German people. But... Um, yeah, uh, I have those too. So it'd just be funny, I guess, to see the Vampire Lord duke it out with the Santa Claus. Okay. Uh, so I'm keep gonna I'm gonna keep going there. Uh, I don't. The reason why I didn't get Marvel partly because of the shipping is I will buy Marvel immediately if they bring out Marvel Marvel Dice Throne Adventures. Then yes. You don't want to put them into the. I don't want to take Doctor Strange to go fight the Mad King or whatever. It just doesn't feel. Yeah, it it's like weird, it. and I don't. No, I don't enjoy it. Maybe I'll buy it later on just to have like more characters to, and and even then, Doctor Strange fighting Spider Man. Whatever. I mean, I did actually it happened in the movie, but whatever. <laughs> okay, enough about Dice Throne. Okay. Uh, is it still me or is it that's still me? Yeah. Number eighty six. It was 70 before, mm -hmm. so it went down 16 spots. And I don't, I don't know if you if you played this before or not, but uh, it's King's Forge. No, I played So I got the whole shebang with the, the Kickstarter years ago. I think it's one of my first Kickstarters, must have been, because it's so long ago. Because there's all the expansions, Glassworks mm -hmm. and everything. And basically, it's a very simple idea. Uh, you have a bunch, you have a really big deck of uh, weapons, shields, whatever you can craft, many, many yeah. different things. You take like, I think, 10 cards or whatever. You, three of them are open on the board. And then there's like five cards, five locations you can go to, and then several locations that are set on the board where you can go. And then it's your turn. You have your dice. Your dice represent wood or, or glass or uh, steel or stone or whatever, all those different things. You start with the basic ones, of course, and then you just choose. You can put a die and then take the card and do whatever it says, uh, or you can try to save your dice because then you can use them to roll to try to craft. Mm -hmm. But of course, you want to spend your dice because you want to get more. Like, for example, one spot is you put one die, you take two. So then you have two in your hand later on. Or you can say, okay, I changed two black dice for one wood, for one green die, for example. Um, and then certain cards have different actions that allow you to get plus one token or a reroll token or a, a, an automatic six. So people do that, the cards will keep coming out and you know the cards that are in the deck for the second, for next round because the cards stay the same. So you know in advance, oh, the caravan will come out again, but I just don't know when, right? Okay. So stuff like that. And then when the round finishes, you probably have a bunch of dice in the beginning. At the end of the game, you're gonna have a ton of dice and then you roll them once on your turn like just like boom because it can be like i'm talking about easy 20 30 dice like you just bang i suggest a dice tray <laughs> and then you just check right how many can i craft and if you're the first player you just put your dice there and then it's the next player and then you hope they're not gonna top you because they just have to have more than you yes. and then they'll 
take it away from you. They'll steal it. So it's one of those games where it's better to be last again. But then if you're last, it means also that every time you had the least good cards, probably. Mm. And then whoever had crafted the first four or five cards, they win. And of course, every expansion has new cards, new things to craft and so on. It's very pretty, I feel. And I just like rolling so many dice. I remember uh, back when I was watching reviews, Tom Vassell, name drop, uh, said he didn't really like it as much because you only roll once. But then there's so much mitigation that you can get that allows you to roll more than once and have a plus one. So I, that doesn't really matter. But the fact that there's so many dice in one go, mm. it just is so fun. I don't know any other game that allows you to do it. That many dice in one go? No. So that just that's the reason why it's there. Okay. That's King's Forge. Sounds good. My 86 is another... It's, like, it's, like, it's <laughs> one of my favorite ranges for Euros. Mid, heavy, mid, mid to heavy Euro. Um... Pulsar 2849. I remember that. I've, I've, I've almost bought it several times. I really love this game. <laughs> it's probably the least thematic of all my games so far. Oh, okay. yeah. But it just has such a clever mechanic with dice drafting, with the averages thing worked out. And it's got the tech tree, which I really love. And it's got, it's got a map where you move around, which again, it's one of the things I really like doing, moving around a map mm -hmm. and building things. and. It's just, I really do like it. I think it's a really cool game. And then it keeps expanding, right? Every round, there's yes. like new stuff, new tiles that come new tiles out. Well, the tech tree goes higher. Yeah. One thing that I, I, I always found was a little bit of a shame was mm -hmm. that the, the board, the stuff you put on there doesn't look cooler. The, that's the thing. The, the, the map does look a little boring because it's like yeah. the, the, it's doing the blackness of space. But the, the dice drafting is awesome. The dice drafting yeah. is amazing. Yeah. And yeah. I haven't played for a while, so I need to get it back on the table. But... As I said, it's the dice drafting, it's the moving around the map, building things, mm -hmm. and um, the tech tree is really cool. Yeah. It's just, it's just all those things are... Because I remember the things when, we, when we played, I was really bad at building things on the map, but I was always busy with the tech, tech tree, tree and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and I think it allows you to do that, yeah. you know? And as I said, it's one of those... It just it hits the right spot for a, for a good Euro for me. Yeah. Not light, but not too heavy. Yeah, like I said, I've been close to buying it several mm. times, but uh, the, the problem also is with, with games, like like I know the game, so I'm always drawn more to what I don't know yet. Yes. Like, yeah. <laughs> so, so it's like... Yeah. Unfortunately, he's one of my favorite designers, Suchi. Yeah. Unfortunately, he left um, the company after making this game, so there's never been an expansion for it, because I think mm. it would have been one of those games that could have easily had expansions and yeah. Yeah. cool things added to it. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely original. Yeah, yeah I can so see it's why. It's one of my favorite games. I really yeah. do love it. Number 85. Um, it's Clank in uh, all its iterations. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Legacy, Space, the new one, Catacombs. Well, which ones do you own? All of them? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Legacy one, and then, yeah. Do you need to? No. <laughs> okay. Do we need to own any of these things? <laughs> the... I do. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, yeah. I had the, I had the yeah, the space one you probably didn't need to own. But I think my question is, are they, are, are they different enough? Um, the first one is the maps. The first yeah. clank is the maps. Legacy is legacy. That's different. That's yeah. the same thing. Category, when space came out, they had the modular board. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Which is interesting. Oh, yeah, of course. That's so that was cool. Now, the new category is now random tiles. Yeah. I've seen people really, really, really upgrade the game. Like, have like actual pieces they put on and everything. The miniatures? Yeah. Yeah, there's up, up both those miniatures. Yeah? Oh, okay. Painted cool. the mouse one. Okay, no, no, but I mean that like furniture or whatever. Oh, yeah, that's like the furniture. Not furniture, but like, like no, a there were, altars and stuff. Like no, no, that there, there's actually were actually uh, packs with, with, with miniatures. Oh, okay. And that's they cool. come with individualized decks. Because I remember playing Clank originally with you. Yes. And, yeah, and I remember you said, you're going to really love this. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I don't like it that much. Yeah. <laughs> no. Since, like I said, you go bad tasting games. Yeah, true, true. Well, one of us has to. Um, but it's, I, I think, disagree. I think it's really, it's a really fun game. Like, I, the, the deck building and yeah. the moving the map and the tension it's fun it's I don't know when we when we played uh, I remember my reasoning was that I expected more from the deck building I didn't think it was exciting enough or whatever I think that was something like that I don't know I just didn't didn't grab me you know, how I expected it would be 
would grab me actually i don't know okay. i don't know it's a long time ago as well. be, be i'm really fun. i'm really interested in the legacy though legacy is great because yeah many people legacy have said it's great. hilarious and it's really cool and it's one of the, one of the best legacy games yeah so but then uh, so many legacy games already <laughs> play, i know i know the feeling no i just think it's it's just a it's just one of those games that hits the right spot it's not too complicated so anyone can play it mm -hmm. it's fun to build up the deck it's fun to move up the move on the map and so much variability no it's just great uh, it's, yeah like i said i want to want to try it again but then the legacy uh i think i might like that better i don't know maybe maybe i've grown mm -hmm. as a gamer who knows i don't know like I, I didn't dislike it it's just i didn't like it enough to buy it it's mm -hmm. like that there's many games like that that was 85. Five. All right, my next 85 was, I'm pretty sure that's going to be a crossover down the line. Um, it's Resurgence. I don't know. You didn't reach a top 100? Mm -hmm. Huh? Because you were so much more- I did, but didn't make the 100. Ah, because you were so much more enthusiastic about it. I than know, I was surprised. It just, I just didn't make it. Well, but we're just, just so- It was, it was 100, 110s. It just goes to show how, how uh, I mean, good your collection is, I yeah. guess. No, I really do love the game. It's a good call, but for, it didn't make the 100. For me, Resurgence is that high uh, because of the whole theme. Uh, mm. Because I've always wanted a game like that. I played so many mobile games like that. Uh, I also have Fallout Shelter, but I still haven't played that. Um, and just the fact that you have your base, you can uncover stuff, uh, build mm. it up. And then the whole system of deciding where to put your people and then yes. revealing. Uh, is really it's also it's also on that spot a little bit because of the potential it has like I said last time mm -hmm. I've only played solo so far which I really enjoy as well no, you but, need the tension they're trying to get each other's minds yeah yeah and uh, with uh, yeah, with a solo that doesn't work yeah. it's just you're just Fair hoping enough. it's not gonna happen yeah um, but yeah aside from that um, it's just I don't know I just I like it the way it looks the the, the way it plays um, mm. the, the, the the strategies that you have to to use to do it and then uncovering the whole base stuff and so on and the powers that the, the workers you can mm. do it. They can hire, yeah. yeah yeah so yeah I, I really enjoy it and it's at the moment it's on 85 obviously it's new mm. um, so we'll see what happens with it in the in the future but uh, I think yeah because theme wise because for example i also have a 51st states uh, master set that did not make the top 100 but that is basically the same idea yes uh and i really enjoyed that one play i had but i you know i need to play it more to really uh because that might go up a lot if i play it more because that's also really cool so I have another game on my list later on my list that's very similar theme that, yeah. I, lo that I love much more. Yeah. I don't know if you played with you before, yeah. but we'll get to it when it comes. So with Resurgence, yeah, it's like a, it's it's there, um, mm. kind of placeholder-ish, I guess, because I know the potential it has. And, yes. Uh, yeah. Okay, so my 85. 84. I don't know if you know this one. Uh, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Uh, it's also new to the list, but I've had it for a couple of years. I guess I've never added it before. It's uh, Winterborn. I know it. I haven't played it. It was also a Kickstarter a long time ago. Yeah. Um, but basically, with Winterborn, you have... It's a Viking game, right? A uh, Viking-themed game um, where everybody has their own clan. You have your own little... uh I should say it. Kind of like... A, area the only the country where you have three characters you have a ship you have an explorer and a warrior and on your turn you are going to play cards that allow you to move them and wherever they stop you can do a certain action so like a, a warrior of course is going to try to conquer lands an explorer will explore okay. the ship will allow you to trade or get goods and so on but it all also depends on the cards so those actions you do might get you new cards and those cards might focus more on the actions they can give you or they might focus more towards uh, uh, um, set collection or they might give you certain powers like if you conquer they give you tiles that you can use later on uh, for certain powers or end game scoring and as the game goes on you can also um, conquer lands so you'll be putting stuff in between which will give you more scoring at the end as well uh, but then might limit your exploring abilities 
And you also have your own uh, special Viking power. Everybody has a different power that you can also use at certain times. But if you do use it, I think you lose the potential points at the end of the game because I think those are, uh, those are also points. Uh, but it it's, doesn't take up a lot of space. Um, but it is just really an, an enjoyable. It's like really thinky. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, every time I play it, I think it looks nice. It's brain burnery. The different powers give it a different twist. Um, the cards that you... Because it's, it's kind of like a deck builder. It is a deck builder. And uh, yeah, just a Viking, Viking themed game. Uh, and also one of the games that I didn't think I would like as much as I did, even though I backed it. Um, even got an, an, an Etsy insert for it to keep everything nice and, you know. And uh, yeah, and I remember playing uh, with solo, but also with other people. And uh, yeah, with, it becomes more cutthroaty with other people because they're going to go for the same stuff that you want uh, more often than if you play solo. Solo is just more time limiting, you know, you only have X amount of turns to do stuff. So yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, not much more to say about that. I don't even know what the game looks like. Well, you'll just have to watch the video. <laughs> I have to. Uh, that was uh, Winterborn number 84. My 84 you definitely played. I don't know if you like it enough to put on the list. It's Rurik, Dawn of Kiev. Well, I have to wait and see. Uh, okay, good. So we might have number two at least. Well, okay. A spoiler of alerts. We played it on my on my birthday, birthday so uh, obviously I like it. <laughs> okay, fair enough. But you were kind of salted you in the game, so I wasn't sure. No, 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 no. I wasn't. No, 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 no. no. Okay, great. No, no, no. I don't. I don't salt on games very quickly. It's, it's uh, okay. I don't really speak too much because it comes out later. But yeah. it's, that bidding mechanic is so good. It's it's our shift kiss. It's it's so so good. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And this, again, I'm surprised no one's ever used it in other games because there's so much potential with it. Mm -hmm. Like, just that balance of, I want more, but I'll go lost. Yeah. Or I'll, I'll just save my money, bide my time, and yeah. bigger it's, splash it's, next round. Or, yeah. mm. It is just so clever. And then you go, you know, the, the area control is pretty standard. Everything else, the rest of the, the game is pretty standard. Yeah, something it doesn't break. I, well, one other thing that I really like about it that makes it stand out more is the fact that once you reach a certain point threshold, well, any point threshold, you can't go down again. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. I, could, I that, think that's that really true. important. That you can really like go for um, like military immediately, try to get as much as you can, and then just focus on other stuff. But or then whatever. maybe the game would be even more tense if it, was, if it wasn't there. It had to be more punishing. Yeah, but I, I like that fact that you can just you don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah, then, I get you know? that because um, you've achieved it. You, you got the, you got the achievement. and it puts more pressure on other people automatically. Like, oh crap, you already have that, so yeah. I better catch up yeah, to you. Yeah, well, or I won't get the points. But yeah, we'll talk about it later. But there's so much like about this game. Yeah, it's, it's uh, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a beautiful game, beautiful production. The minis are cool. I painted the minis; they they're cool and. Yeah. Um, the expansion, I don't know, maybe it makes the game a little too complicated. Um, I th what I like about the expansion, I think that's part of the expansion, is just uh, those cards that that, that, yes. that give you different starting positions. That's really cool. Stuff and, so on. Yeah. and the different types of buildings are nice. Yeah, I'm not so sure I'm, f I'm fond of the kidnapping. prison and the everything. Kidnapping thing, yeah. But, uh, but the different buildings, because they're random, right? Yes. So. And I, I should do like, I don't know if you don't like it, the, I like the fact that they make the, the what they call the outlaws more dangerous. Ah, yeah. It gives a bit of tension. It makes the game yeah. more Okay, yeah. All, all right, yeah. That's that's why you thought it salted yeah. on me because I always got screwed over. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. But even then, you know, I mean, I don't think I performed really badly. No. In the end, so it's it's fine. I mean, yeah. yeah. I, I, it's like such I said, a good game. It's, I'm, yeah. I'm the kind of person, if I know it's in the game, I can, I can deal with it, right? Exactly. Uh, I have more problems with, like, uh, dishonesty. If someone says, it's okay, I won't do it, and then they do it anyway, <laughs> then that, that's more of a, Fair you enough. know. So, that's, that's my 84. Number 83. Is Chronicles of Crime. Yeah. The scanning game, right? Yes. Okay. You ever played it? Well, I played it and I felt like I was sitting at a cash register. No, that's not true. I haven't played it. I don't know. <laughs> I, I just, it, just the variability of the game. 
Okay, I love you know, I love detective stories as a kid, you know, like the, the Sherlock Holmes kind of thing, and you know they it just they're so expandable. This game. Okay, you know you know how the game works, right? So yeah. you get the items, you get the oh, you get the th- you get the the three D thing to go look at the the, venue, the, the yeah. murder scene. Yeah. You go interrogate people. It runs on a real time thing. So if you miss going to them one time, they might not be there. They could you go there again. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, so you could. There's a bit of a time. There's a bit of a time rush. Um, they may be lying. You t- you ask them a question. They change their point of view. Mm-hmm. It's the app that just allows things to happen that would never happen in a card game. It's straightforward cards. Mm. So that's really cool. And then what's also really great is that they can change the genre. Yeah. There's so much different things like they got. I said there's a, there was a modern day one set in London. Uh-huh. There was a, a like a full noir version set. In, uh, yeah. Do you have all of them as well? Yeah, it was it was two expand. It was two Kickstarters with, and they came all together. So which one's your favorite? I like I like the um, the France one. No, the, the third one, the second space all in France. But I, I like the one in the Middle e- Middle Ages. Yeah. The name of the rose type one with the with the with, oh, the, okay. with the monk and you get your dog and. But I imagine is there a lot of replay replay replayability? Probably not. Once you probably f- not. No. Okay. But you can come back to it later. I mean, so like, again. Oh yeah, yeah. Like Obviously, ten years ten from years now. Later, but, yeah. <laughs> but then again, <laughs> listen here. You get the game. There's two games, right? Yeah. There are at least thirty different games in there, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah How many yeah. times do you play any game thirty times? Oh, you wow. see what I mean? So you <laughs> talk. Do you mean like? No, 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 no. Yeah, I know. I know what you mean. I, so. It's just, it's just, it's 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 a great game for fun. If it's for, with people, you talk. You know, you've got the goggles and you're looking around and you're talking yeah. aloud and you want to start yeah. search for weapons. For me, that question is more like partly for the people, but also, um, I think I would see it then more as a solo game. I agree with that. I played a solo and I did enjoy it, but the difference between that and the solo, same with any of these detective games, is the best part about. When you, when you play solo, you can't bounce off ideas off people. True, true. And sometimes it takes the, the combination of you to think of something outside the box. Yeah, but the problem for me then is that I would want to keep playing with the same people and not they interchange. Are. With Can you just easily interchange? It's just different cases. Different missions. They're, oh, they're, okay. they're all oh. campaign. It's just random okay. missions. But it doesn't get progressively harder or whatever. You choose the difficulty level. Oh, okay. So, cool. like, so for example, each scenario, each um, era has like, say, six... Ah, okay. Different stories, and they'll tell you which level difficulty each one has. Okay, yeah, that's okay. Then that's really good. Sounds really good, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Nice. As well as Do you have any other detective stories? I don't know detective games because there's like there were, at one point like a bunch of them came out, right? Yeah, there's one more coming up later. Ah, okay. All right, just checking. <laughs> All right, uh, my eighty-three is it? Hey, yeah. It used to be fifty-eight. It's now eighty-three. So it went down 25 mm-hmm. spots. And it's a Stonemaier game. Do you know which one? What was it first before? Uh, 58 and now 83. So it's either science or viticulture. 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 Yeah. And the reason why, why is it, dro- I don't know, I just don't. It's one of the few games my wife wants to play because we drink wine then and it's like social other people come over and we play it but I think every time I play it I feel it's I enjoy it every time but it also feels long I always feel like it takes quite a while but maybe it's because you always play with higher player counts maybe maybe that's not good enough Uh, maybe it's better to play with two or three or maybe just bad players takes long to to reach 25 (laughs) points because we have to because we have to explain it to them yeah because I I also upgraded it completely I have like the the insert which has like the grapes on it you know like the, yeah, all the floral yeah. things and everything and did I, you get the box the big box now um the crate no 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 no. I don't know no I just have the regular box still I just came over the big box yeah. now and then <laughs> and then the little bottles I got okay, the, I the little that. wine bottles and then I got the plastic replacements but I'm not sure if they're better actually because they're a little bit too bright so I'm, I don't you. know but uh Essential edition, everything with the seasons makes it way better. Tuscany yeah, board nice. makes it way better. You got the expansion with the, with the cooperative one? No, no, because I think I just don't play enough. And also cooperative, I don't see why I wouldn't want to play Viticulture. I do think um, the one thing I really like about Viticulture, oh, I'll be talking about it later, is the solo variant. Another one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's the solo variant. I uh, think the solo variant is very good. I still haven't played it. 
Mm-hmm. It's got a very clean system with, with the ah. with the Atomic cards. Uh-huh. You know, you just pull a card and just yeah. block spaces. Okay. And I think they might that world thing might make it very interesting solo game. Okay. Oh, okay. So I can cooperate with yourself. Yeah. No. <laughs> I think this really well done. <laughs> no, but yeah. 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 I mean, I know uh, the the whole uh, expansion was there, but like I said, I think viticulture it only comes out uh, when people want to drink wine over at my mm-hmm. place, and then now it's in storage. So okay. I know I, this is one of those games again that I should play more because I know it's good. I know I like it. Um, but yeah, I think I also probably most likely will exchange those plastic pieces for the regular pieces again mm. because they're just too... It's the meatballs. Yeah, like I put them on Etsy, they're just too shoddy. They're just yeah. too bright, they're like really fluorescent. It's just like, it looks cheap. I thought the wooden meatballs were pretty good anyway. Yeah, but then the, 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 they have actually like turning stuff and everything is more like... I think maybe it's it looks, it's for it. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I should paint it. <laughs> yeah. We okay. should paint everything. Uh, so yeah, that was Viticulture number 83. Number 82. Uh, so it's actually behind me, but you guys can't see it. And it is Sanctuary Keepers of the Era. I'm very much. Um, so it's from uh, Tabloid Games, yes. right? It was a very beautiful game. Um, yeah, because also because of you know you know IKEA, Amnesty, uh, all those kind of games. So it's kind of like the same world, I guess, mm. roughly. And this one is just a head-to-head two-player game again. You can play it solo too, uh, which I've done several times. I've played one versus one as well several times. And one thing I like about the game is, of course, it's really pretty, uh, and it comes with two mats that are part of the box, which is so awesome. Because the box has like two layers, so the bottom layer has the mats, nice. you take them out, pop bum, you play. Really, really cool. Uh, really nice production. Uh, it comes with, I think, six different factions, yeah? They all play very differently, all very beautiful arts. Some a bit strange, you go like, uh, okay. But... Um, Was that all that came, or did the expansions with more factions? Well, there's more stuff coming, um, okay. but because it's, uh, I think, there's more stuff coming that will could be added because it's like Volfurion and so on, okay. all this stuff. I think it adds stuff to that one as well. I don't know if they're going to bring more. They could, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Okay. And um, what I like about it is that you have basically, because you have so many head-to-head battlers, right? Mm. But you have two rows. So the top row, whoever is there is going to be attacking. They only attack. They don't defend. The bottom row is only defenders. So you have to make sure that when you place your cards, what you're going to oh, be using okay. them for. And also, if your deck runs out, you're dead, basically. You have to watch out because with your deck, when it runs out, you're basically dead because one cool part about Sanctuary is you have your Sanctuaries at the bottom and you're trying to protect them. But they have a counter. So when the counter reaches zero, then they come into play. Their okay. power becomes active. So you know in two rounds that Sanctuary of his or her, or it, or them, or whatever, becomes active. And then, like, this is an awesome power. He cannot get this, or whatever. So you're actively trying to stop that. Or you're making it look like you're going there, but then, you know, you shimmy to the other side, or whatever, because of certain powers. But if your deck runs out, your sanctuary starts getting automatic damage. So you can't just be going like, because some some factions allow you to draw more, but that means you have to punch harder, faster. Otherwise, you're just going to shoot something. Yeah. And then there's some special uh, game modes you can use. Like, for example, one of them has your leader. When they die, you just flip them over and they have a lasting effect on the battleground. So they're already powerful, but then when they do die, they might say, okay, from now on, all your units have plus one power because of their, they get angry mm. or whatever. So it is really cool. I don't play it hardly as um, uh, as much as I would want it to, once again, because it's two player game, one versus one. And I think that's always a bit weird to do a meetup with a one versus one with someone you don't know. So, but once again, actually this could easily be done in a tournament with four people uh the only downside is i only have two mats so it's kind of just Mm. not play with mats at all i guess because you can just put it in front of you but yeah and you also have a certain way that you can play where you um have a mini campaign with points and then you can spend points to get more cards but i haven't really touched on that yet and solo you play against an an ai that uh, brings out certain uh that uses the other decks as well 
Okay. Uh, and you try to take it out. But yeah, there's videos of that on the channel, but from most games we talk about, there's videos. And yeah, just the whole theme, the looks and everything. It's, uh, yeah. I, no, I was, I was tempted, cool. but I don't get to play two-player games enough. So well, yeah, I didn't get it. there's the thing. I think I'm going to start trying to do the, the tournament idea more, uh, mm. just to get it played. Because all you need to do is explain the rules, and yeah. then if if people have some experience with board games, they should be able to take it from there. Because it's not that complicated rules-wise. No. So yeah, that was uh, <laughs> Sanctuary Keepers of the Era number 82. Well, my 82 is Bulges of the Ganges. Ah. Did we play it together? Yeah, um, I guess so. Because I, I, I used to own it, so I don't know if I bought it because of you or not. I'm not sure. I think I did because of you, because I really like the dice. The dice is great. It's a yeah. great, again, beautiful board. It's beautiful production. Yeah, the art is beautiful. Beautiful dice. You, dice placement. Yeah. And I'm, it's... Sorry? Yeah. No, 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 no. Let's continue. I'll, I'm laughing, but I'll tell you why in a second. Okay, mm -hmm. and, and just and the other thing brilliant about the game... Is it okay? Just again the play, the work of the work of placement with the dice. You got your own little like 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 fields that you're building up as a book and a path around your the place in India, and also the brilliant mechanic that Ark Nova stole. Yeah, yeah. Which is the two scoring tracks. Well, copied. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're inspired by. <laughs> okay. But um, then, yeah, yeah. Which, which, which two scores interlock? Yeah. But Arc Nova is just a combination of mechanics from different games. Yes, but anyway, well, yeah. you said it for most games. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's just it was just well designed. The brands mm -hmm. just are great designers, and it was just again it's just that light um, heaviness for me. It's not too heavy. It's but it's also not crunchiness to it, and the theme just comes through. I really like this game. Did yeah. you get any of the goodie boxes? Yes. Because they're really good. They're really cool. Yeah. They're not very expensive yeah. either. And yeah. They just add more. That's what you want. That's what that's kind of that, what you want. Just more stuff. And it's another another one of those games where you when you roll, you really hope. Okay, I hope I get this yes. and this and this. And there's different strategies that you can exactly. do as well. Exactly. You can always pivot and you can always go um, different areas. It's, it's, it's a great game. And, and I was laughing because when I got Ark Nova. I thought I don't need Rachas of the Ganges anymore. It's so different though. Yeah, but you know, lack of space was a was a problem. Is a problem. So I got rid of it, and then a, a couple of weeks later, um, after I realized that I wasn't that fond of Ark Nova at all. After all, I sold Ark Nova, <laughs> so now I ended up with none of them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but did you get the 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 what is it uh, the raw version of Rahas with the Ganges no uh, I didn't bother I, that didn't, didn't look very interesting no as I said there's not many as I said I didn't I've looked into it didn't look as good as I was okay uh, that, so that might be a game that comes back to my collection because yeah. it can get really tense the last couple of turns when people are getting really yeah. close and I don't, yeah, I'm comparing with Art Nova now but I never got that feeling with Art Nova but anyway yeah and so uh, it's, it's it, it just hits that sweet spot of heaviness and mm. tension and, and beautiful and beautiful at the same time. Eighty yeah. one is a legacy game, not legacy. I mean, like, like an old game that I love, and that's Shadows Over Camelot. Ah, yeah. cross or no? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't probably have you ever played it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I've. I've it's one of the games that I've heard ever since I got into the hobby and seen also. Uh, I just, never... it's, it's just, it's, it's, again, it's that cooperative game with a hidden trait, potential hidden traitor. It's not that complicated because you're basically just doing poker hands. Yeah. But again, it's very beautiful. It's kind of thematic. And you can yeah. think of you like um, Monty, Monty Python. Mm -hmm. And it just brings it all in there. Because again, it's like putting out different fires. Mm -hmm. So... Um, someone's doing the grail, someone's getting the Excalibur, someone's fighting the knight, someone, you got to worry about the pikes and mm -hmm. the camera, the, 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 and the catapults coming to attack the village, uh, to the, the castle. And you, every, every turn you've got to do one good thing, one bad thing. You've got to, you to pull a deck or, the, or something bad's got to happen. Oh, okay. So there's incredible tension yeah. as bad things just build up. And you're trying to, again, the whole game, you're just trying to put out fires. And it, it just works well as a cooperative game, but the, and always wondering who the traitor is, and mm -hmm. and it's much yeah, it's just far simpler than something like Battlestar Galactica. You know, because Battlestar Galactica is like a step up on this. 
Yeah, I never thought, I never knew it was had such a Monty Python influence. Well, no, it's not, it's not ah. obvious. But, you know, you're, <laughs> okay. you're King Arthur, and, uh, yeah, yeah, and you okay. can make you can play Goofy if you want. Oh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I just said, yeah. run away. Yeah, it's just again, <laughs> you can't help it sometimes, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> it's like really that's in the game. <laughs> no, no, but you just can't yeah. help yourself thinking about it. But I always thought it was it looked interesting, but back then when I when I was actively seeing it, I've mm. never never. I mean, the only co-op I then had was like Pandemic or whatever. Yeah. And again, it's, it's a pure co-op because it always yeah. could be the traitor. Yeah, I never, like, I didn't know enough about board games then how it exactly, sure. I was just buying pure on site. For me, it was just when I first got into a hobby and I heard this game, I was a traitor. It's just, it just blew my mind that I have a yeah. game where one person's playing against us, but we don't know who it is. And yeah. and then plus, the, when I found out that you, there may be a chance that the trader's not in the game because it's all randomized. So maybe you, you accuse someone of being a trader, but then you know there's no trader. <laughs> yeah. And just like, it was so unique at that stage. Now it's become almost, you know, it's become a cliche in the board game of the trader mechanic. Yeah. For that time, it was just so exciting yeah. to, to think about the potential at a table. Yeah. So that's why I got just simply for nostalgia reasons. My 81 then? Um, it's, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure you've played this before, but I'm not sure. This game has left my collection and then I bought it again. <laughs> uh, and the reason why I left my collection is because you really need to have the right people. And uh, there's a solo mode now. Uh, and it's Thunder Alley. Have you played it? I played it with you. Yeah. What did you think then? It was good. I haven't played with your wife. She hated it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some people just... Because uh, I think I won it. Because uh, was it the game where we played with six? No. Because at one time I played with happening. six. No, it, it was at... It was four of us. Because I didn't want to play with six, but then they are, no, it'll be fine, but fine. But then they just dragged on. And then half the table wasn't really interested in it halfway through. I so think then, it was four players we played. Yeah. Maybe it's five. But so... I like racing games in general. Like I don't, I haven't talked. Oh, well, I guess you could say that a long shot is a racing game, but I like racing games in general. Yeah. And uh, what I like about Thunder Alley is the whole drag racing kind of like mm. you know you move one car and all the cars behind it will move along. So it's kind of like tactical, but then with the event cards, some cards might blow out and everything. Yeah. Um, and it's. You have your own cards in your hand, so you put you, you choose what how much risk you also put into how much wear you use and everything, and the different tracks. There's so many tracks because you you also have the Grand Prix series. You can buy Grand Prix, not play Grand Prix at all, and just use the boards for Thunder Alley. I'm not saying Grand Prix is bad. I never played it. So I like we really like to do competitions, and I can't wait to do like a competition with all the different teams, and mm. then you know see what happens and. Uh, and even though I'm doing a CFR competition, I know it's not that popular necessarily for the views, but I really don't care because I enjoy it's doing it. Yeah, exactly. And then I uh, might as well record it and put it online. Who, okay. who knows? But uh, I mean, who knows what happens? But yeah, so there's definitely more racing games on there. And yeah, that's also why I, I want it for basically any sport that I like. Like I want to have a basketball game is the same thing, a football game is the same yes. thing, and so on, so on, so on. So that's why Thunder Alley is there. That's why Thunder Alley came back because it has a solo mode now. And okay. I see a future for it. And uh, yeah, and the only thing that I wish was different uh, is you have the cars and you flip them after you've used them. Like I want it to be real cars, but then the problem becomes which one did you move because there's so many mm. and then the, yeah. So that's kind of like, it, I can see why the system is necessary, but it's, yeah, visually it's not as cool. All right, that was my 81. Thank you. What was your 81? Was Shadow Oh yeah, I oh, yeah, actually finished. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much for watching once again, and uh, we'll see you next time. I don't think we have to say much more. Uh, nice. Once again, if you want to share anything, any comments, do feel free to, and uh, I'll see you next time. Cheers. Bye-bye.